All right, I'd like to ultra enhance my module buildings, and today I'm unveiling the first part of my boutique hotel. Greetings, my fellow bushy blobs of subatomic building blocks. Name's Hans. All of the plants, quarter of teal bricks, and as always, berserk for Legos. So this is gonna be a slow unveiling. Each floor is gonna get its own video. And today we're doing the rooftop and the penthouse suites. Yeah. And before I start talking about my boutique hotel, I just wanna talk about the original set, the 10297. But when the photos were first unveiled, I think it was November or December, I immediately fell in love with this module building. To me, anything with angles is freaking awesome. The fact that they were trying to go for it, the flat iron building style, I was totally thrilled by that idea. And I think Lego and the Lego designer specifically did an amazing job on this boutique hotel. It just gives me so many awesome vibes. And the vibes that this thing gives me was just, it could go anywhere. So it could either look like it's from a tropical area or it could look like it's from a Mediterranean area. It would look good in Egypt, Cairo, or Istanbul, Turkey, or Cappadocia, or even the Napositano Amalfi Coast in Italy, or Spain, or Portugal. And it also looked great in Cuba, or Puerto Rico, or Buenos Aires. Like, that's how universally awesome this boutique hotel is. So I'm gonna have to say, I think this might be my most favorite Lego module building. It just got so much style. I love the angle. This building is freaking cool. Now, the other reason that I really, really liked the boutique hotel was it has tropical vibes. And if you don't already know, if you're new to my channel, I love plants and I love the tropical vibes. Heck yeah. And I'm building a Lego city that's a tropical Lego city. It's also set in the future in the year 2060, but for the boutique hotel, it's tropical. And this is going to look amazing in my tropical Lego city. Even before it was released on January 1st, I already started drawing up plans as to what I was going to do with the boutique hotel, how I was going to expand it, what I was going to add to it. And then on January 1st, I bought two of them and started to get to work to it. Lo and behold, eight months later, it's done. I'm ready to show you guys. Now, when I ultra enhance all my modular buildings, I try to keep it somewhat simple. And what I do is I take the uh, modular building on the existing 32 by 32 base plate. I expand the building all the way up to the edges of the 32 by 32 base plate. This, however, is a completely different story. When I first saw the original release images of the boutique hotel with the angle, I knew right away I wanted to make this a standalone building. And I knew right away that I wanted to make this into a parallelogram. But I did a lot more than just that. So I didn't just expand it to the 32 by 32 base plate anymore. And I was super excited to get working on it. Over the last eight months, I've been off and on working on this amongst a bunch of other projects as well. I gotta say, I was expecting other people to do the same parallelogram diamond shape. It just seems really obvious to me. I honestly do not believe this is a unique idea or concept. So I was a little bit surprised that I have yet to see anybody else do the diamond shape. All right, before I crack it open and show you guys the penthouse suites on the inside, let me give it a quick spin around and show you some of the external features and, and let you guys get familiar with the overall shape of the building. And then I'll quickly show you guys the rooftop and then I'll open it up. All right, so this is the primary front of the building. And of course, we've got the spire right there and underneath that is a balcony there. And then over here, we've got another balcony and swinging around to the right. You can see it's the same, but on the back of the building, you'll notice something different right here, and that's where the elevator is. And yeah, I definitely wanted to put an elevator in this hotel. I'm not gonna say how tall it is just yet. That's gonna be uh, something you'll find out later on in the future videos. And of course, this is where the El Cubo art gallery is. And here we are, now we're right back to the front. So my Lego city, Paradisa City, is a tropical city, and the people of Paradisa City love plants, and it's got plants everywhere. They like to be eco and green friendly, and part of that is they grow plants everywhere, and it just creates this beautiful, gorgeous city to live in, and it feels like you're living amongst nature. So most of the buildings in Paradisa City have plants growing all over the rooftops, and this is no exception. All right, so I had to raise the uh, tripod on the camera. So now I get to present this to you while I'm standing up. And here's an amazing look at the parallelogram diamond shape of the building. So I know this way measures 33 studs, and I don't recall what the dimension is this way, but it's approximately 64 studs. Paradise City being in the future in the year 2060, it's got a lot of eco-friendly and, and energy efficiency, and this hotel is no exception. 
and it's got uh, triple solar panels and it's also got two of these micro windows we've got the two skylights for the penthouse suites over here is the elevator this is my typical elevator design and if you look inside you can see that the floor pattern is very similar to what you see in the hotel lobby and if you haven't seen my standard elevator design i've got a tutorial video on that so definitely go check that out now most of the roof is covered in plants but there is a little bit of cobblestone for the gardeners to walk around on we got some flowers going on over there lots of palm leaves we got some tropical trees and this is a new type of tree that i kind of developed which is where the palm leaves are sagging down so uh, beforehand i was always just kind of attaching them straight but now i've got some techniques going on where I'm making the palm leaf sag so this is a new type of palm species that i've been working on we have butterflies we have birds we have ladybugs somewhere around in here we got squirrels there's a squirrel over here there's another squirrel oh you can't see it oh well too bad and if you look over here we got a couple of bird houses actually this one's occupied by squirrels this one's got some birds in it in the original boutique hotel it uses a series of hinged glass pieces and i decided i liked it much better to use these four by four quarter circle windows and I came up with a neat little technique to attach it. And I really liked adding these uh, bow slopes as well as these little one by one pyramid pieces. Oh, and then I, I liked adding this right here to get like a nice closed fit to the window. And right here, these are a bunch of steps because this is a trap door that swings down so that they can have access to the rooftop. Yeah, and they just climb right on up. And then to close it, I'm just using this little technique right there to uh, kind of hook onto the, the railing. Okay, and one other thing to note is that I got rid of the gray stripe that was part of the spire portion right here, and I just made it all sand green so it matched. So the dark gray stripe going on, you know, on the rest of the roof. One other thing to note is I got these 1x2 cheese wedge slopes on the edges here, and this is not official. It was just kind of a quick experiment, but I just kind of left it on there. What I really wanted was to have the one by one quarter circle tiles in sand green, but Lego doesn't make them in sand green just to cover up the studs. I don't like having the stud showing and I would have done it for the rest of the roof too. So hopefully eventually Lego will come up with the, uh, or maybe that new piece, that new piece that's a one by two half circle tile. Yeah, I put that on there. And here you can see a drone that's flying. And this drone right here is taking video of the girl that's standing right here on the balcony. And I'll kind of talk about that later. is the penthouse suites we got one and two so coming up the elevator this is the entry or lobby area we got the first room with its bathroom and we got the second room with its bathroom so the elevator has a glass wall right there and that is alternating between clear and the translite blue bricks to give it a nice little effect and down there on the floor is the pattern it's using metallic gold and black triangles right there on the wall is our piece we have the keys that used to be used for all the rooms in the hotel uh, back in the days of course, this is in the future now, so all the doors are operated electronically with smart home technology. And if we go in the door from the left, we've got this penthouse suite room. And this is uh, characterized by the teal colored furniture. We've got a massive king sized bed in there. And going over the top of the bed, we've got the decor that's uh, lots of plants growing up there. We've got a nice floor with wood planks over here against this wall, right next to the entrance door is a large screen TV with a desk and a chair. And we've got the armoire right there. Nice big size armoire. Here is the bathroom. Yeah. And it's got white and gold tiling on the floors. We've got a nice large sized spa tub, which can hold two minifigures. If you notice, these two employees are goofing around. They're not supposed to be sitting around in that tub. It's not full of water, of course, but uh, I think they like each other and they're, they're kind of flirting with each other. What they don't know is that the person who reserved this room just checked in and is on her way up to this room. So they're about to get caught. We got the shower head right there. We got the toilet and we got the sink. Okay, let's talk about this balcony right here. It's got the double glass doors right there. 
I knew I wanted to have a nice size balcony for people to hang out on. The ones on the original set were just a wee bit too small. And now that we've got the new six wide door, having these double opening glass doors was just perfect for this. I also didn't like how low the railing was in the original set, so I just raised it up and I'm using the light nougat uh, bricks right there to just give it a bit of a border. And one thing to note is that I did increase the height of this part of the building by two plates. So it's a little bit taller, a little more headroom in there. And here's the window for the elevator. So the elevator obviously is a glass elevator so people can look outside as they're going up the elevator. All right, and here is the penthouse suite room. And one thing to note is that these rooms are not perfectly symmetrical. So this room has a slightly different shape than this room. This bathroom definitely has a different shape than that bathroom. It has to do with the fact that one is you've got the elevator over here in this side, but not on this side. And the other thing too is that the dimensions of this building is an odd number of studs. Now, each of the bathrooms has plants grown in it. In fact, all the rooms have plants grown in them. So we got a plant over there. Some vines with white flowers growing on the wall right there. Another thing I did was I changed the walls to be the subway tiles. So subway tiles is a popular indoor decor for kitchens and bathrooms. And so the interior walls of the bathroom are all subway tiles. And down there you can see a linear drain for the shower. The couches match the bed, so the teal bed, got a teal couch. Now over here, I completely reconstructed all of this. In the original set, it had a wall kind of extending into the room and then doubling back just to make that connection. And what I did was I came up with a technique very similar to what you see on the first floor. So that way it's much more open. It doesn't look like there's a little hallway right there. I think I moved the door back, um, but the balcony area is actually bigger. Minifigures can actually step out and stand in that balcony right there. So moving on to the penthouse room at the front of the building. And this one's the coral colored one. Nice, bright, vibrant colors. It's pretty much the same layout. The plants are different. The door position is different. And the bathroom is slightly smaller. Here you can see the spa tub is filled up and it's got some uh, some bubbly soap. Some soap suds already starting to form. It's got a little heart on it. Beds also come with a little heart and a chocolate. So what's this girl's story? Well, she's actually in one of those Instagram travel couples. And this is her dude. And they travel the world visiting exotic locations. And that's part of their business They just take gorgeous photos of themselves in these exotic locations. And that's what the drone is for. The drone is uh, flying around, taking images of her and him. He's got his shirt off and he's got his nice linen Cuban style pants. And of course, she's got her nice linen white maxi skirt. So definitely one of those travel couples that makes everybody super jealous because they all wish they could uh, live that kind of lifestyle. And what they're doing here is that they actually get to stay in this penthouse room for free because they are part of a deal that promotes the hotel. Uh, for tourism to bring more guests. So in exchange for posting photos of them in this hotel on their Instagram to show off to all their millions of subscribers. So to go with that, they've got a laptop on the desk and they've got their camera with a tripod. And of course they got their suitcase. And this suitcase is like completely open and everything's scattered everywhere. You may notice something different with my elevator shaft. In all my elevators before, I was using Technic Beams, and I decided I would try something that would be a little bit more lower cost. Technic Beams are a little bit more expensive. So what I'm doing is I got some bricks with uh, side weight studs, and I've got just this plate with a tile on it to act as the railing. And it's a slightly cheaper way of doing it. It's a little bit more loose of a fit for the elevator. So I still think the Technic Beams are better, but this, again, this is lower cost. Now, one other thing to note, I'll talk about this more in my other videos, but one of the biggest challenges with expanding this was coming up with a good equal distribution of these windows. Now because of this angle, it's not as simple as just saying, oh, I'm just gonna increase the building by an extra six studs or whatever. It completely changes this here, and then you've gotta work out how to equally space all these windows. That gave me a lot to think about and trying to work out, and at one time I was like, oh, the windows are gonna be here, and then I was like, oh no, I gotta shift all the windows one stud that way, or two studs that way. And then I would uh, figure out some more stuff, and then I'd be like, oh no, I gotta shift all the windows back that way again. Uh, and one thing that was uh, definitely challenging was the fact that a lot of the walls on this floor and the floors below, where these walls attached to here, had to be between the windows. And so not only did they have to be between the windows, but they also had to line up nicely with the hinge brick. So that was definitely throwing some challenges my way. Now the nice thing is, it wasn't intentional at first. With the overall dimensions of this building, it actually worked out nicely and closed up this gap a lot nicer. So you'll see on the floors below in the next few videos, that was one of the big complaints that a lot of people had with this building, was how big and open this gap was. And it just turned out that the way the dimensions I ended up with worked out nicely to get this gap pretty minimal. So it actually looks a lot better. When you see this whole building put together, you'll definitely see how nice it, it turned out. And there are just so many nuances and things that I had to consider and think about that I'm not even gonna point out or talk about today. And one thing I wanna say is that the angles 
the way the Lego designer created this angle I thought was amazing. It was pretty brilliant. I'm going to talk about how I was able to extend these angles because that in itself was, uh, was definitely a trick. But I do want to say that the way the Lego designer did it, I thought was pretty awesome. I mean, the fact that in order to get this particular angle, using the combination of two wedge plates together, so just using one wedge plate would only create half this angle, but the two of the wedge plates together doubled the angle. This is not an ordinary expansion. This is completely 100% custom built. This is nowhere near even close to following the instructions, the floor, the walls, the whole building. And if you want to see another one of my fully custom built modular buildings, go check out my Grand Emporium, which is also 100% custom built with its four floors of working escalators. And as I said in the beginning, each floor is getting its own video. So next week, you're going to see a video on the floor just below it, which is going to be the other Odell rooms. Yeah. And on that note, I'll catch you guys later.